in these strange times, it's like everyone has a little bit more time to finish projects. So I've just been working on this new camper build out for the last forever. I spent years rigorously testing the durability of duffel bags. Pretty much everyone I asked thought a soft shell camper was a terrible idea, except for one TNF employee who grew up living in a yurt and believed in life in a soft shell home. Lucky for me, he was also the guy that had access to unused duffel bag fabric. The duffel bag camper sits on 41 inch Nokian snow tires. It's heated by a diesel heater, and if my math is correct, I could heat the camper for two hours per day for over two years before running out of fuel. There is a thousand watts of solar power keeping me charged. My batteries are big, and I have two of them. They power the lights, refrigerator, faucet, electronics, and my cooking. So we've been living this house for almost six months now. And this is our tiny A-frame house. We are off the grid. We build it in four months. I think it's one of the best decisions that we have made to build this tiny A-frame house. Now these weeks have been difficult as well here in Mexico and we are living in central Mexico. But when you are in this place you really don't don't see much of the of the problem. We have been walking and cycling for hours. Today I walk for six hours and cycling another two hours, so it's kind of peaceful These times are challenging for many and school is out and a lot of people are at home with their kids. Peek-a-boo. But what is schooling and what should we be learning? I make one finger hole. I make two finger hole. I make two finger hole. I packed it too much. Let's do this. For me, what I want to be teaching my kids, be around the food that they eat so they know where it comes from and what it is. And it's not just some packet from a long way away. <laughs> This home is 80 to 90% reclaimed local sustainable material, salvaged through dumpsters on the beach, job sites. It's anything and everything put together from bamboo to driftwood to invasive species to reclaimed trees. And I feel people are making more and more conscious decisions about what kind of home they live in. Is it synthetic artificial imported off gassing box? Or are they taking a second look at it going, hmm, if I spend a little bit more, I can get something local, sustainable. If I take the time to pull those nails, I can create a reclaimed piece of wood, giving that piece of wood that tree the respect that it deserves. It does not mean that we don't have our future comforts. It does not mean that we don't have our, our phones and power. It just means that we can be more mindful. We have a choice. Every moment is a sovereign moment. We have a choice. How to play out our day. What's real for you? Why are you here? Are you here just to pay your bills? Are you here just to, to scroll all day down your phone looking for some form of joy, entertainment? tap into who we are and, and show the kids how to thrive once again and not just survive. Keep going, I 
can see. Oh yeah. Keep going. Home gym here, folks. Oh, it's so close. So close. Yeah. Okay. Push-ups. Two, three, four. Uh, just want to share uh, the view from my window here at my garage. One car garage turned cottage, thus garage. And I love hanging out in the canopy of all these trees. Because when my brother and I moved to this property in 1994, Almost none of these trees were growing. So we've been planting for 20 plus years with our neighbors. A big goal we've set forth and something that we are achieving is we want to give more water back to the local system than we take from it. We harvest about 100,000 gallons of rainwater a year. Most of it in just passive water harvesting earthworks. Right here, household drain water is directed to that pipe and to plantings in our landscape. And even if you're in an apartment, you don't have a yard, you can still start to practice lots of these things. You can start growing in pots. We're not just planting the plants, but we're also planting rainwater via this subsurface irrigation oya, which when not buried, mostly, it looks like this. So you pour water in here, the water slowly wicks through the unglazed ceramics directly into the root zone. So it's a very efficient subsurface irrigation system that loses far less water to evaporation and whatnot and reduces the amount you need to irrigate. Again, as we are in the time where it's really important to wash your hands and all. So we've got a little tippy tap here. So by the sink, as soon as I come home, I immediately come here and wash my hands. And so I don't have to touch a faucet or anything. I instead, put my foot on this pedal, which pulls this string, which pulls this down, okay, and I get water. So I can get my hands wet without um, touching a faucet handle, and then I can grab the soap, and I haven't contaminated anything as I come in. This thing's called the tippy tap. We set it up just as a conserving water strategy. This I love. I love being a partner with the life. And I just love hanging out in the canopy of all these trees that we planted long ago. We usually work in behind that window um, at my desk, but on this side of the window is my favorite spot. Just hearing the bird life, it's so much cooler. I see the mesquite tree, it's only just starting to bud out its leaves. It's a wonderful living calendar. I'm gonna be harvesting some mesquite pods, wonderfully naturally sweet, carob-like food, local grain, irrigated solely with rainwater. And we haven't stopped, we keep planting. I just love that whole expression of best time to plant a tree was today or even better, 20 years ago. <laughs> During this time of self-isolation, it's hard to feel connected, especially living on my own in my tiny house. There is no better time than now to reflect on what home means. My heart goes out to those who have no home, those who are living in their cars, those who live paycheck to paycheck, and those who have no health insurance. This pandemic is highlighting the seriousness of our housing crisis. More than ever, I'm motivated to find a solution. My vision of a tiny home community is ever present. built Tiny Camp as a permanent tiny house village on foundations 
This is in Northern Arizona. We're about an hour and a half south of the Grand Canyon. And we're at the confluence of two creeks. So it's like our little garden oasis here. We have a, a net zero energy unit and also a net positive unit that uh, is run with a battery pack and can be taken anywhere off grid. And I think during this time is a really good time to practice utilizing our own resources and becoming more resilient. We've only been open about a year and a half and we're just working on opening up and creating new organic gardens so we can grow our own food. A nosotros nos gusta reciclar cosas, nos gusta agarrar cosas que ya no quiere la gente, que, que son desperdicio y entonces las traemos de vuelta a la vida. Este muro nos, este, nos da tranquilidad, aparte oxigena el espacio que tú desees. Es algo que amerita tiempo y tiempo ahorita es lo que nos está sobrando. Entonces ustedes pueden ir juntando botellas de refresco que sean del mismo diseño a ver si puedo se le, se le hizo la perforación con una broca a la tapa se le hacen este orificios para que por ahí filtre el agua y esta misma tapa que es de esta botella sirve como cierre y ya le doy la rosca y no utilizamos ningún otro clavo más que la de hasta arriba. Las botellas que ustedes ven abajo es donde se acumula el agua que cae desde arriba y reutilizamos esa agua para la, el futuro riego que es cada ocho días. Entonces aquí no se pierden las proteínas o los minerales que contenga la tierra. Tenemos otro proyecto que no hemos completado, está en fase. Aquí ya son, son plantas aromáticas, que igual el sistema de riego va a ser que las de arriba vayan regando a las de abajo. Hay menta, hierbabuena, hay albahaca, este es orégano. Igual se le hizo a las tapas la perforación para que se puedan regar en automático están aquí cortadas este es el material lo único que necesitas es hacerle la perforación le, lo cortas y ya tienes tu siguiente maceta This is the first quarantine we've ever been through. But I feel like we have an advantage because I feel like we're prepared for it. We grow a large portion of our own food, uh, so we don't have to worry too much about that. I feel like this is uh, the best position we could be in going into something like this because, you know, we're, I wouldn't say we're 100% self-reliant because we're not, but we're, we're way more secure than a lot of society. Yeah. So that helps us a lot. We're fortunate that a lot of the knowledge we have, we're able to share with people and people seem to be really looking for that right now. And that knowledge provides a little more comfort, feel a little more secure, and so it creates a lot of calm.
Also the knowledge of how to do things. If you can't find bread on the shelf, but you know how to make bread, you have a little less fear there of what am I gonna eat. And it's a knowledge that, you know, it's not just something that you can lose. It's, you know, if something happens to what we have, we could, we could start over if we need to. It's a tough time for everybody. It's still stressful. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, but it's 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 tempered a little bit right. because we know that if we get stuck here where we can't get out at all, we're gonna be okay. Hoy, paradójicamente, mirar por la ventana, o sea, hacia afuera, es más que nunca mirar hacia adentro. Dale. ¿Va? Como en un río todos los días vamos arrastrados por la corriente, sin tiempo de parar. Y ya todos intuimos, casi colectivamente, lo, lo agotador y lo infecundo que es remar en contra. Y hoy, de repente, se nos abre este remanso, una ventanita de tiempo para reflexionar. Quizás no sea la última parada de este tren loco hacia el abismo, de hecho, probablemente sea una parada programada y con otros fines. Hola, Benito. Pero lo cierto es que mirando por la ventana, o sea, hacia adentro nuestro, muchos hoy nos preguntamos, después de este quilombo, si llego a zafar, ¿a qué tipo de vida le voy a regalar mi tiempo? ¿A qué tipo de vida le voy a regalar mi tiempo?